So today I'm going to go through the equipment that you might need for, for a cycle tour, which will probably be good for up to a week. So this is what I really uh, use to contain all my equipment and get everything packed on my bike. So I use two Ortley panniers, they're my two uh, main rare panniers to carry bulky items. I've got a bar bag for essentials and I've got two front panniers as well. And I also carry my tent here on the, on the rack. So I'll go through each, unpack each of those individually I think, just to give you an idea of what you might need to take for a weekend cycle camp. Well, I think first of all we'll start with the handlebar bag. So this is an Altura uh, bag and the things to look out for really is that um, it's waterproof, that's the main thing. This is about uh, 10 litres I think capacity. So what I've actually got in here is a map of my route. These are things that you will use uh, any time during the day. So uh, this is a, a really lightweight windproof. You can uh, just roll it up weighs nothing. Some gloves. It's October here at the moment so it gets a bit chilly so uh, some gloves. Your wallet. Kit bag. Uh, I, I keep this here. It's just got odds and ends in it but uh, I'll go through some of the contents. Again it's uh, in a waterproof bag here. So these are things I might need quite frequently. So let's see what goodies I've got in here. So I have uh, my mobile phone holder. So this straps to the handlebar of the bike really useful, a uh, couple of pounds. Uh, head torch, available for whole hands, uh, deodorant, any other goodies. Uh, my spork, use it for everything when you're cooking or if you just stop and, I don't know, buy yoghurt or something, spork. Uh, a micro towel, just if you need to wash your hands uh, and you need to dry them. Uh, I've got matches and a lighter as well, and just a mini tool. I've got a main tool kit uh, in the other bag, but just this is just if I need to cut something or tighten something, and it's got a bottle opener and can opener. So these are just things that um, I would use at any moment, really, and I need quick access. I also carry maybe a snack bar or something in there, just so that uh, they're easily accessible. So I do recommend that you get um, a handlebar bag and the good ones, a good brand is Altura. So the second thing that I think I'll talk about is the tent. So I normally strap this to the rack of my bike, the rear rack, and there's so many opinions and preferences about tents. This for what it's worth is a Scarp One Tent, 1.5 kilos, uh, in my opinion one of the best cycling tents you can get. I'm going to do a separate review about this tent here in, a, in another video. But uh, do your research, look online. But I wouldn't go over for one person maybe two kilograms for a tent. Lots of information online, so do your research. So let's move on to the front pannier. So these are Agu, um, uh, a brand, and they are, they've been excellent for me. So they fix onto the front wheel and uh, they've got the things to look out for. These ones actually aren't waterproof, they're water resistant. And the reason I chose these is because some things get damp, your clothes might get wet, and you might want them to dry out when you're cycling. And if you've got, if all your panniers are waterproof, then uh, they can get mouldy pretty quickly. So let's see some of the kits. So in this one, this is the front uh, right pannier, I keep, um, various bits of uh, cooking kit mainly, but let's see what, what we've got in there. So this is my canteen set. Yeah, this is really tiny. When I first got it, I thought it was too small. Uh, it's 500 mils. It packs away really small. Uh, uh, it's very small. Uh, I've just got a wash pad and soap in there, which I keep inside it. So it's got heat resistant, so you can put that directly on fires or uh, or your cooking uh, stove. And also inside, I'll just uh, put that there where you can see it. It's a really good piece of kit. Tiny small lid as well where you can uh, fry eggs or something like that. So, uh, what I've got here is uh, the Optimus Prime stove. So again this is tiny, this runs off gas. So you can put that uh, on your gas cylinder and uh, it's folds up really small. I might have the gas cylinder here. There you go, so that just screws on. 
you light it, hey presto. So that is the kit that you will have for your canteen set. And uh, if you're in remote areas, some people have different cooking systems. Gas is good for the UK and Europe or somewhere where you're near civilization because if you run out, you can just buy some more. First aid kit, really important. Uh, always carry that with me. Your pump. If you get a flat, which you probably will do at some point, it's always good to carry a pump. Uh, spare um, bungee cords, yeah. uh, bicycle tools. So these are great. So, you know, these uh, can be picked up for a few pounds in any cycling shop and they contain almost all of the tools that you'll ever need. So let's carry on and see what else we've got. We've got a puncture repair kit. You can't go anywhere without the puncture repair kit. And a slightly larger tool that um, can really undo or if you need to do any repairs that aren't really in the set of your smaller bicycle tool. So that is it. So I'm really impressed with these front panniers. The other things to look out for are really to have uh, a drinks holder at the front. That's quite useful. I've really made a lot of use of that. And there's another external compartment here. So you can put items that you need easy access to. So that is my front right, uh, sorry, front left panel. Right, let's move on. So this is the other, my other pannier. Let's see what we've got in here. So here uh, I have, it's exactly the same make. Ah, I have my ground sheets. So this is for my tent. Uh, I put this under my tent to stop. Uh, you throw it on the, you just, it's a cheap tarpauling and you put it on the floor just to protect your tent ground sheet. So I carry one of those and they weigh nothing. I put it in a separate bag because they can get dirty. You don't want it to mess up the rest of your gear. A micro towel. So these are really useful, a microfiber towel. So if you, in some, well, particularly in winter and autumn, you can get a lot of condensation in your tent. And this is really good just to wipe down the condensation in your tent. And then you can dry it off on your bike while you're cycling during the day. For the techies amongst you, not everyone does this, but I carry, if I'm going on a longer trip or I'm going on a trip where um, it's flat and not so many hills, I think it's worth, I take uh, a computer. So this is just a Chromebook that I use to uh, look at photos or even edit uh, some video. Uh, not everyone takes this, everyone's got a different opinion, but this only weighs a kilo, just over, so for me it's worth it. <clears throat> the other thing is if you're going on a really extended trip, uh, this is for weeks, months, you might want to read and it all takes power and sometimes, or I have in the past taken a Kindle because the battery lasts for months, so if it's raining and you're stuck in your tent all day and you, you're low on power, you can, at least, you can at least read in your tent. It's not for everyone, it's a personal choice. Obviously, I'm not being minimalistic here. So, um, yeah, each to their own. Now, this is important. I take this wherever I go. I, I take water, obviously, on your bike, but this is a camel pack. And this is a godsend because uh, obviously you can carry more water if you're going into remote areas. But what you can also do is you can hang this from a tree and two litres is more than enough to give yourself a quick shower. So if, if, if you're not near any facilities, you can just wet yourself down, rub, uh, get the soap on and then rinse it off. And two litres is enough. So you've got a shower. So we'll move on to the bigger, uh, the larger panniers here now. So I've got two of these, Ortlieb. Now Ortlieb are amazing. So if you want to know more about Ortlieb, just go onto the website. People will swear by them. They will last for life. They're a bit more expensive to buy, but um, they will not let you down. I've had these for years and they've hardly got a scratch on them. So they are waterproof, completely waterproof. Uh, they can seal up this particular type. So you can either put them, you can actually submerge them even, if they're sealed properly with these particular ones. So what do I have in here? So I've got my sleeping mat here. This is just a, a carry more sleeping mat, three seasons. So I use this up to October, November in temperate uh, countries here in the UK. What else have we got? Sleeping bag. So this is a very lightweight one, maybe a kilo, and this is down. 
Now again, do your research. Some people prefer down, some people prefer synthetic bags. Down is warmer, lighter, goes small, but if it gets wet or damp, it loses its thermal uh, ability, insulation. Um, it loses its insulation, so synthetic doesn't. So again, people have opinions on this, so do your research. I use down if I'm going on short journeys and it's relatively dry. If it was wet for weeks on end, I would use a synthetic bag. So what else have we got? Uh, I have, oh, a couple of sitting mats. These are excellent. You just get these from camping shops. Uh, they're about a couple of pounds and you can throw them down and sit on them anywhere on the grass even if it's wet so they protect your backside. Um, so this is controversial. This is an ultra lightweight backpacking chair. It's not an essential item but again if you're in the UK or similar place in winter more than likely the ground's wet and if you're cycling and camping at night it's good to get off the ground. Now these are on Amazon. I'll do another review of this checks. It's been fantastic and it's less than a kilo as well and it's almost a full-size chair. So uh, I'll let you know where you can get these from but I think it's worth it. For me it's been worth it. Even more controversial. <laughs> if and even more load to add here. This is a table. It's a micro backpacker's table and it only weighs 600 grams. Now again, do you need this? No. But if you're going on a long journey, it's cold, it's wet, you don't want to put your laptop or anything on the ground. This keeps it off the ground and it's marginal. If I, if I was going uh, long distance, up and down steep hills, I probably wouldn't take this. But if I'm relatively going uh, a week tour, it's relatively flat, it's good. It's good to have. So there is the contents of one pannier. So this is the last one. So it's amazing what you can carry. You, things uh, add up if you're not careful. So in this pannier, I would normally carry or I did on this trip. Uh, this is a, an inflatable pillow, worth its weight in gold. Again, you can get these on Amazon for a few pounds. Well, this one was quite expensive. You can get these on Amazon for a few pounds and uh, they keep your head off the ground and they're worth it. And they only weigh a few grams. What else have we got? A tech bag. So this is where I keep all my tech in here. So I have, uh, a power bank here. So I use this to recharge my phone, uh, GoPro, uh, uh, anything else I might have there, uh, earphones, uh, a, a, a clip on light. So I've used this. I found this really useful. So again, it was originally a Kindle light, but I found it really useful to clip on tables or your uh, chair or hang from your tent uh, without using your head torch. So this is, uh, I really like this piece of kit, it doesn't weigh much. Uh, I've also got just uh, some things if I'm filming. Again, these aren't essential, this isn't essential. I want to attend. And another attachment for my GoPro and uh, the uh, stand. A spare battery for my phone as well, which is charged before I go. So this is in my tech bag. Uh, reflective vest. This is really important uh, to be seen. Uh, cycling, it's not risk-free and I feel a lot more comfortable when I've got this on, on the main road. Important. Quite a thicker waterproof. I've, I had a thin one in my front uh, saddle bar. This is a much thicker waterproof um, and windproof jacket. Spare cycling shorts. Uh, another layer, so if I'm cycling you get cold, gets colder, there are layers so I carry an extra fleecy type uh, top and when I stop at camp and it's really cold there's another uh, overall as well which is another fleece, uh, a bit uh, looser and thicker. 
waterproof trousers just in case you get caught out in the rain and you have a long distances to cycle they're worth some evening clothes so once you're in your sleeping bag you don't want to contaminate it with all your sweat and all this so i wear a pair of long john a top just for sleeping and socks and pants and that is it so that is a whole load of kit uh, together it should weigh not more than 30 kilos that's a very broad some people are very minimalistic get down to 15 or even 10 kilos for me i've noticed uh, i'm okay up to uh, 20 kilos 20 to 30 is okay if it's relatively flat land if you're in a mountainous region you want to get the weight down as much as possible so you can get rid of the tables the chairs uh, the laptop all that kind of thing but uh, it depends it's a very personal choice so I hope that gives you some idea of what you might need to go on a cycle tour for a week or longer in the autumn. So just one note about all this kit is that don't worry if you haven't got all the latest kit. Uh, once you have a couple of panniers that you can fit to your bike you've already got, just go away for a weekend or a overnight camp and then slowly you'll get to know what you like, what you need. And, uh, and before you know it, you'll, you'll have the, your ideal equipment list. You've had, when I started, I just had some <laughs> really bad panniers uh, that kept falling off every couple of hundred meters, which was annoying. Uh, but the point is that I built my kit up over years and uh, all those times when I had rubbish equipment, I still had uh, a great time. Those of you who are new to cycle touring, but just want to give it a go, just get out there. Just just do it, even if it's close, even if it's a campsite on the outskirt of a city. Just cycle there and try it, and uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, one more thing, if you do like these videos, please do subscribe because it's a huge incentive to carry on to keep doing these, and hopefully they're of use to someone. So watch out for the next Bikeonomic video, and thanks for watching.